Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and a couple of weeks ago, I started what's been dubbed as Project CJ64, which is a system that repurposes the framework laptop mainboard into a mechanical keyboard for a retro-inspired modern PC. Obviously, this is a project that I'm continuing to develop as framework isn't quite at the upgrade point yet, but by the time they are, this should be a fully realized component anyone can manufacture, drop their old mainboard into, select their mechanical switches and keycaps, and you have a new, highly compact and practical desktop computer. Now, shipping delays, my full-time job as a husband and dad, getting a new roof, painting the house, and an almost complete redesign of the CJ64 itself have put me behind development a bit, so I'll be getting to version 1.2 of the deck soon. Today, we're gonna prep the new key switches for the board. This video really wasn't in my production schedule, but I figured some of y'all might find it interesting and maybe for those of you not into the mechanical keyboard scene, you might learn something. In the first video, I used a set of Gateron Blues I had on hand. And I quickly discovered there are a lot of Gateron Blue haters out there. And my typical reaction is, it's a custom keyboard. Customize it and use the switches you like, which may be different than what others like. If I like Gat Blues, then I'll put them in my damn keyboard. But in this case, I can't really justify a long rant on the topic because actually I don't really like clicky switches. I had these on hand because I pulled them out of my key cron and replaced them with some alias silent tactile switches. I like tactile or compound switches, not so much linear. So for this build, I got from Mass Drop, not holy panda switches, but Halo Clears because I'm not paying over a dollar for any switch. The clears are a heavier feeling switch, but not as heavy as the Halo Trues and should work good in this taller keyboard where you may have a heavier hand. However, even though they are rated at 65 grams, they feel a lot heavier than that because they use a compound spring that gets heavier towards the bottom of the keystroke with a bottom out force of closer to 80 grams. It's like 78, I think specifically. And I would actually prefer them a bit lighter and more linear after the bump. And it just so happens that the 60 gram aliases I put in my Keychron are a little too light for me and I'd like them to be heavier at the bottom, which will help with sound dampening as it'll be a little bit harder to bottom out. So I'm gonna just swap the springs. Now, admittedly, five grams, not a huge difference and not really worth the effort of the swap, but it's more about the spring types that's gonna almost completely change these switches. I also need to lube both sets of switches anyway, so might as well swap the springs while I'm at it. In a perfect world, I could just get a set of third-party springs in the exact weight I want, like 55 to 58 gram linear for the halos. But with the world we live in as it is, I can't find any in stock from a reputable seller I'm familiar with. Just like I couldn't get the 70 gram aliases I wanted back like six months ago. So this will at least get me closer to what I want. Now, the important part is the lubing and to be honest, the worst part. I really don't like lubing switches and therefore I never do it. The alias silence have been in this keyboard unlubed for about six months now and they're very noticeably crunchy or gritty feeling. I'm definitely getting spring crunch. The halo clears feel great, very smooth, but I'm hearing a fair amount of spring ping. Which, when I install these into the CJ64 because of the essentially hollow mainboard case under the keyboard and the brass plate I'll be using, I'm thinking that metallic ping will be significantly amplified. 
So while I have a bunch of boxes laying around containing components for Project CJ64 version 1.2 and version 2.0, this box I pulled out of storage and it is my key switch lube station, which I've had for a long time and only ever used it a few times for keyboards I built for other people, but they paid me well for the effort, so. Anyway, this is a solid aluminum 32 switch lube station. I, I like it for what it is. It has both MX and KL switch openers built in, and I typically do like to keep everything organized, and I do use the little spots for everything, but I'm doing two sets of switches today. I don't wanna mix stuff up, so I got a bunch of paper bowls and I'll have to sort all the pieces and parts. So I'll put like the aliases over here and the halos over here. I have two baggies for the springs. I typically don't bag lube springs. I just don't tip the end, but because I have some crunch I'll go ahead and lube the whole spring. Well, I guess it's just time to disassemble. Okay, I got my switches pulled. I got everything set up here. Now, for anyone who's not familiar with the mechanical keyboard scene, there are two basic type of switch housings. Well, there are more, but two main types, Kale and Cherry MX. The alias is a Gadron switch that uses a Cherry MX housing and the Halos use a Kale housing, but they both open pretty much the same way. The Cherry style uses this opener with the four points. Just line up the tabs with the four points. I usually just make sure that the pins are facing me and then just press straight down and the switch pops right open. So now I got the housing top the stem, the spring, which I can put in my bag, and then the housing bottom. The KO housing opens the exact same way, just using this double wedge opener. So you just place it in there. Again, I make sure the pins are facing me, and then I just press straight down and it pops it open. And I can take my housing top, my stem, the spring, and the housing bottom. So now I just have to do that like 140 more times. Okay, everything's disassembled and I'm gonna start the lube job with the springs cause that's easy. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my oil, the GPL 105, and I'm gonna put like four or five drops in the bag. Two, three, four, five, that's enough. Okay, I'm gonna seal the bag up. Getting some air in there. Like that, and then I'm just gonna shake, shake, shake it like a Polaroid picture. All right, same thing for the other one. Two, three, four, five. Okay, and boom, spring swap. Okay, that was the easy part. Now the fun part, or not really, but lube time for everything. And in the mechanical keyboard enthusiast community, lubing is a way to really fine tune the feel and sound of your keyboard and there are a ton of guides on lubing and modding switches. There are different lube types for different switch types. I don't really get into all that. I have one type of lube for every switch, this 
205 grade zero and this is a relatively inexpensive brand not the really expensive Crytox stuff everyone seems to love and then you saw the GPL 105 it's a PTFE oil for the springs which I actually use this more for lubing the screw drive and rails on my 3d printer but this lube station came with everything I need to do the job which for me is just a little brush this stem holder and some tweezers and then I have some extra brushes and stuff in here if I need them now both of these are tactile switches so I'm gonna lube them both the same exact way which is almost everywhere except for these little legs right here and the metal leaf in the housing bottom because that bump impacting on the leaf is what gives the switch that tactile feeling lubing it will smooth out that bump in the case of the alias which are just barely tactile will essentially make them feel well linear so starting with the bottom housings i'm gonna use just a tiny bit of lube and i'm just gonna lube the bottom of the housing and around that spring stem holder in there and that's it i'm just trying to reduce some spring noise in here so that's all i really need to lube and because i'm lubing the rails on the stems I'm not going to lube the rail guides here on the bottom of the housing because I just run the risk of over lubing the switch. Now, one thing I don't really worry too much about is over lubing the spring. So I have my tweezers and again, I am trying to get rid of spring noise and spring ping on this. So I'm just going to take my spring and just give it a dip. I got some lube on the cap. Just give it a dip right there to just get some lube on the bottom of the spring there where the coils are really dense. And then I'm just gonna place that bottom right there back in the housing. And for the stems, I'm gonna lube basically everything again except for those legs. So here I can take my little bit of lube Get some on that rail, some on that rail. And then I just want to lube everything. Again, being careful not to get it on those legs. And then I want to lube again inside around on the bottom, inside around the stem. And you just want to lube until the surface is just shiny. You shouldn't see any of the milky white indicating that there's some really thick lube on there. Just so it's just shiny. If there's any little extra, just brush that extra off. Then I can return the stem to the spring in the bottom housing, making sure that the legs are facing the leaf. Then just reattach the top housing. The top housing doesn't require any lube at all. Now I've gotten rid of that spring crunch. And still hear a little bit of ping, but that's from the leaf because I'm not lubing the leaf at all. But much smoother, much better, but we'll assess those later. Now I find it faster to just go ahead and do 32 at a time. So I'll lube the bottom housing, the 32, and then each part as I put them together. Uh, so I got a lot to do, so let me get started. Okay, now that I got 32 of the bottom housings lubed up, I have one extra step that I'm gonna do with just the alias switches. And because I have a little bit of housing wobble and 
Also, because I'm shooting for silence, I'm gonna film these. So these little films go between the top and bottom housings, and apparently these Duroc films are double-sided, so the matte surface is supposed to go towards the bottom housing and the shiny surface towards the upper. I don't know exactly what the difference is or if it makes any difference, but that's what the directions say. Now that they're all filmed and lubed, I'll just do the springs, the stems, reassemble, and then do the next batch. Done. That only took six hours for 140 switches. But was that time worth it? Well, that's really hard to relay through video, but on my Keychron, I have an unlubed and a lubed Halo Clear and unlubed and a lubed and filled alias. The unlubed switches also have their original spring, so not spring swapped. And starting with the Halos, they both have that solid tactile bump right at the top of the switch. No pre-travel, so nothing's changed there. But after the bump, thanks to the new linear spring, there isn't that almost second tactile bump you get from the compound spring, which makes the switch feel a little mushy at the bottom. Now the alias silence are noticeably smoother and heavier. There's still the pre-travel and the bump hits just as the compound spring gets heavier, giving the switch a little more tactile response than the stock one. And then the switch wants to stop just before bottoming out. The sound is quite different too. Let's check this out. Okay, final sound test for the alias. This is the Keychron with the stock unlubed alias switches. and with the new tuned alias switches. So ultimately, while the time spent lubing the switches wasn't what I would call fun, the results were definitely worth the time invested. The typing experience on my Keychron is so much better and now I can almost guarantee that nobody else has a K6 that feels and sounds like this one does. As far as the full sound test for the Halos, well, 
uh, you'll have to stay tuned for hopefully my next video and I'll be installing them into the final prototype for Project CJ64. So again, make sure you get subscribed for that and be sure to check out the video I did on the initial prototype if you haven't seen it. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments. Maybe hit that like while you're down there. I hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.